Hello and welcome back to another guide to Jagged Alliance 3. My name is Saiken and today we're going to take a look at all of the perks in the game and which ones are worth it and which ones are not. I am doing guides on the regular, typically keep, uh, keeping them concise, to the point, no BS, no repetition, between 10 and 20 minutes for all you need to know about a topic. Today's topic is going to be perks, perks and everything you need to know about them. Let's talk about perks and their mechanics. Overall, a character starts at level 1, can level up to level 10, and every single level above 1, they get 1 perk point. So at the end, they end up with 9 perks. The character then needs to have enough um, stats uh, height. Um, the perks are bound to N uh, stat, health, agility, dexterity, strength, wisdom. They need 70 for bronze, 80 for silver, and 90 for gold. Additionally, in order to get a silver perk, you need at least one bronze perk. In order to get a gold perk, you need at least three perks combined in these two levels. Now that we got the basics out of the way, let's jump into each of the categories and I'll talk a little bit about uh, what they do and if they are worth it. Good. Number one, we're starting with health. Health perks generally increase survivability. If you are playing on a full lethality playthrough or a higher difficulty where death is actually a real threat, these become very important in general. Let's talk about a couple of them and where to use them. Number one, full body contact, which gives you grit on a successful melee attack, but is helpful for melee only builds or for builds that uh, strongly favor melee. And I will do a specific guide around uh, certain builds. So I would put that into niche. Uh, it is an okay talent for the right build, but it is not needed for all of the others. Hit the deck, uh, you can switch to prone for free, which in itself is already neat, but you also have a 20% damage reduction against explosives when you are prone. That is a great talent for any type of overwatch build or for a build that uh, requires uh, being out in the open often, which typically are overwatch related builds. So again, uh, niche, but good for the right build. Then we have beefed up, which is maximum hit points increased by 20%. And I would say in full lethality playthroughs, there is no reason not to scale into that on every single mercenary that you do have. I would uh, rate it as an S plus um, talent. Very good. There's no downside to it unless you're short on talents. Moving on to the silver um, uh, tree, we got rage. Uh, which is 10% damage per wound uh, capped at 50%. So when you do have uh, five wounds or more, uh, that talent actually is surprisingly good. I was uh, skeptical at first about it, but um, it has more than a niche application. I will say though, towards the end game, the game becomes quite level. So you either end up with uh, being uh, shot down or you shut down the enemy. So they aren't really, it's, it's quite binary. Very seldomly I found myself in a situation where I had five wounds and really wanted to move on. So uh, keep that in mind if you're playing with lethality. It might be a nice extra talent, but not necessarily the first one that I would pick. Revenge um, allows you an interrupt attack when you are taking fire. Uh, the only reason when uh, the only time it not, doesn't trigger is when you take cover. Great for an Overwatch build, uh, so niche in uh, that category. Other than that, I would potentially skip it. I've seen a couple of Shock Trooper uh, builds, but there are simply better ways. In the first place, you don't want to be hit, so um, I would not take it. Which brings us nicely to um, Vanguard, uh, which gives you 15 grit if you're out of cover and another 15 grit when you end your turn adjacent to an, ally, uh, an enemy. Not um, only is that great when you have a melee build where you do not want to move away for, uh, from the enemy, but it is just flat out great uh, for everyone that, uh, that uh, leaves uh, their character open and outside in the cover. It's great for Overwatch builds, it's just generally great. It's a good uh, eight year type of uh, perk. I should say that grit, uh, because everything here is kind of around grit, you get grit uh, in full body contact, you get grit in Vanguard, and you will get grit for with calm under fire. Grit caps at 30 grit, so keep that in mind. You don't want to have multiple talents uh, or too many talents for grit. I found Vanguard it will deliver. It always uh, delivers. Uh, snipers, Overwatch characters, sometimes melee characters that are just outside of uh, of cover uh, will 
get 15 grit and it is just such a helpful talent so uh, definitely a plus maybe s tier in my perspective calm on the fire um, allows you to transfer unused ap over and then you gain grit keep in mind it doesn't uh, work with hunkering down so that was a bit of a an issue for me but uh, hunkering down costs four ap and when you're left with three ish uh, ap this could allow you to gain uh, grit per AP tra uh, transfer. Uh, so the good part of it is the unused AP transfer. The grit is just the icing on the cake. So it's a good talent and I always appreciated that. It's good in an Overwatch build. It is good in a uh, build where you uh, want to suddenly strike and lash out. It is generally a good talent. Which brings us to hold position, potentially one of my favorite talents in the entire uh, tree, besides beefed up. Gives you, whenever you're overwatching, a flat out reduction based on your health. So with 100 health, that's a 50% reduction. This is not going away. It's also not going away uh, when you are no longer overwatching. So it just uh, hits the entire turn and it stacks with other damage reduction multiplicatively. So that plus heavy armor kind of gives you a 75% uh, damage reduction. Fantastic talent, can highly recommend it. Finally, battle focus, gain two AP the first time the, you are uh, hit in combat and uh, it is only happening once per combat until the combat um, ends not a good talent it looks great on paper but you don't want to get hit in the first place and when you want to get hit you don't want to get uh, an AP out of it you want to make sure that you're being uh, you're being safe and sound so I would not skill into that on the regular speeding up a little bit agility tree we start with hit and run free move after melee attack very good for melee builds elsewise not that serviceable free movements stack uh, so if you do have that and uh, increased free movement range or free movement from frog leaping later all of that uh, will trigger additionally so you can actually walk quite far in a melee dedicated build fantastic talent elsewise skip flanker great talent 15 percent more damage against flanked enemies enemies are considered flanked as long as they don't have cover and it's easy to either destroy cover or pick up enemies in the open which happens quite regularly it's just a 15 percent damage boost very good would always use it fast runner free movement range increases when wearing light or no armor that stacks with hit and run that stacks with frog leaping that stacks with a breach and uh, clear so it always increases your free movement range and the base free movement range that you do have very very potent talent movement is key specifically for shock trooper type of builds highly appreciate that uh, you however need to uh, dedicate to light armor which brings us to the uh, silver tier vantage point better accuracy from shooting from high ground and cheaper ap for climbing up ladders uh, that talent looks great on paper in reality it's pretty meh mainly because getting onto high ground oftentimes isn't that easy uh, ledges in particular are notorious so you cannot always climb them up and there is simply not on the regular a great overlook tower where you can place your sniper and j then just go to town typically an enemy sniper is already positioned there so long-winded way of saying vantage point not the greatest talent frog leaping on the other hand fantastic talent um, uh, that specifically resonates with any uh, type of character that starts in cover then maybe needs to move to a different uh, cover the increase in free movement range is not bound to light armor so that really works with everybody except heavy armor wearing characters and i found it uh, very helpful so gets a solid b plus maybe a tier which brings us to lightning uh, reactions dodges the first successful attack against you by falling prone on a high lethality uh, playthrough, this is an absolute bombshell, a wonderful talent uh, that you definitely should not sleep on. It completely negates the damage. Uh, if someone has two bursts on you or an uh, auto attack, it will negate all of the auto attack simply by dropping prone. And mind you, afterwards you are even harder to hit because you are prone. You might even break line of sight. The only downside is if you do have something like a quick prism scope, you might need to get up and therefore lose the ability to take a sniping shot uh, immediately afterwards. I cannot praise that talent enough. It is fantastic. It brings us to Lucky Strike, which uh, allows you to become inspired when you make two crits in the same turn. This is a bit of a mixed bag talent. I like the idea of getting inspired. Inspired gives you four AP and then you kind of can uh, continue. 
but there is simply no reliable way to continuously and always get uh, crits so that that triggers reliably. I found that even with the right ammunition and uh, being in stealth and shooting at um, parts of the body that are not covered, all of that, all of the kind of um, mechanics that you need to play in order to get that regularly, you will use a lot of AP uh, points in order to even get that. With the exception of maybe special attacks from someone like Ice with the Ice Storm where you put in five bullets into five different locations and therefore have a high chance that uh, you crit twice, I would potentially not use uh, that talent. However, um, if it procs, it is great. Which brings us to anatomical precision, 50% more crit damage, that is great. It is fantastic if you go for the eventual crit here and there. Um, it is something that works incredibly well with sniper rifles, so I, I don't mind it at all. And finally, a good talent uh, total concentration attack uh, deals 30% extra damage after a kill until you miss the next time. Snipers tend to not miss um, in the late game at all, so this is a flat out 30% boost. I like agility based characters in general and total concentration potentially would be my first pick, uh, followed by anatomical precision and then lucky strike in that uh, final in that final column. I ended up with a build which had all three of them and it worked relatively well. Moving on to the dexterity perks. So. Uh, untraceable, very strong talent, it essentially increases your stealth ability, very good uh, for any form of uh, stealth kill sniper, it makes you so so much more difficult, uh, pair that with Carmo um, suits and you will effectively be a predator. Opportunistic Killer, so that gets kind of an A rating. Opportunistic Killer enables crits with interrupt uh, shots for a dedicated Overwatch build. Fantastic. Elsewise, potentially a skip. Um, we do have Dead Eye, 5% extra crit per aim. Can go up to 20% if you have that extra aim level on your scope. Elsewise, it's a 15% increased um, crit chance, which is great. So that talent is just solid A plus tier can go into many, many builds and is early accessible for everyone. Then we do have a couple of uh, talents on the uh, on the silver tier that are really more Overwatch focused. Fire Routine, become inspired after landing uh, two hits whilst in Overwatch, so that gives you even more Overwatch. Fantastic for an Overwatch focused build, not so much for non-Overwatch builds. Uh, react the fire, interrupt attacks when anyone uh, misses you during your Overwatch uh, turn. Uh, that is great. It is even better in my perspective than Revenge. Uh, so that will work and it will also, um, all of uh, the interrupt talents will work with Kill Zone, which you find here, which gives you two um, attacks whenever you make a bone, uh, an interrupt uh, attack. So that talent, just like uh, Fire Routine, fantastic for an Overwatch build, not so much elsewise. Ambusher increases the stealth uh, kills while sneaking and allows enemies that survive it to be uh, suppressed. So that in itself is a great uh, talent, super good uh, together with Untraceable and uh, Dead Eye. Those would be the three normal talents that you pick if you want to go to the gold tier, unless of course you go the Overwatch route. Let's look at the gold tier. Sharpshooter, you gain two possible aims with the first shot. That's great in itself, but you also deal additional damage with the first attack. And that is just fantastic. I cannot praise it enough. This is great. I would uh, definitely use that on a sharpshooter. Dexterity for sharpshooter is a very strong skill. Then we do have kill zone, potentially the most imbalanced uh, talent for an Overwatch uh, build. Overwatch builds per se are already strong, but getting that bonus attack, I cannot mention just how much of a game changer that is. In an Overwatch build, that means you attack twice for every trigger, so twice for movement, twice for them shooting, twice for them missing, twice for them hitting you essentially always attack twice and uh, if you do have enough ammunition um, it will just wear down the enemy 
uh, typically none of the enemies in the end game not typically none of the enemies in the end game uh, will withstand more than uh, two triggers they might uh, withstand the first uh, dual salvo but certainly not the second one and then so this is absolute s plus for overwatch builds elsewise skip it and then assassination increases the chance for stealth skills when you're fully zoomed in that is great for a stealth sniper so i would give it kind of an A rating um, if you're a sniper, uh, which is likely when you want to go into dexterity. Moving on to the strengths talents, uh, let's go. Recall management, subsequent attacks uh, will have accuracy bonus. That is helpful and specifically helps to negate um, SMGs and assault rifle problems because uh, they, with their recoil management, uh, really require you to be accurate on the subsequent attacks because the uh, bursts already do have a damage penalty on them. Uh, so for users of automatic weapons, it's a good talent and I would give it a solid B plus to A rating. Which brings us to a breach and clear, free movement after grenades and shotgun attacks. This is such a good talent, specifically if you combine it uh, with other free movement actions. It will allow you to throw grenades and then continue moving closer to the enemy without even switching weapons. It will allow you to reposition. It will even allow you together uh, with a fast uh, movement to throw glow sticks for as little as two AP and then you can continue just moving on and on. It's a fantastic talent, highly recommended, A plus, S tier maybe even. Killing spree, melee focused only uh, builds will enjoy that because you get extra damage for different targets after the first one that you attack. Uh, for non melee builds, it is simply a skip. Bringing us to the silver category. First one, Shock Assault. Again, 30% extra crit chance with melee weapons and point blank. I should explain what point blank means. Point blank is four tiles um, within enemy range, so shotguns and um, and melee builds will benefit from it. However, I should say the talent greatly decreases in value for melee builds as there is True Strike later, which automatically will make a crit attack uh, with every melee attack. So it basically nullifies this here for melee, uh, for melee builds. So it's really just for any weapon in point blank range. Not the biggest fan of that talent uh, it should potentially get a bit more um, value such as maybe 30 percent extra crit chance and damage improvement in point blank range because then it would uh, allow you to stack it with others so at the moment it's more c to d tier ironclad uh, free movement range is halved for heavy armor instead of no free movement range that's good um, it's a good talent for anyone using uh, heavy armor. Generally speaking, if you want movement, you don't go for heavy armor, you're instead going for grit, and that's sort of uh, a more quote unquote meta build. Sudden Strike, uh, you do not trigger interrupt attacks and you automatically cancel Overwatch with melee attacks. That's ultra important for melee uh, builds, but not so much for anyone else. So, niche B tier in that regard. Collateral damage, 15% extra damage uh, to enemy behind uh, cover with heavy weapons and 30% extra damage to, uh, to objects with heavy weapons and machine guns. That's okay, it's a fine talent, but I tell you what, the weapons are already ultra strong, so I have never seen the necessity to actually skill into collateral damage. More so, someone who uses heavy weapons typically doesn't use any of the previous talents, so it's a little bit misplaced in my perspective, and just not that, it's, it's a bit underwhelming compared to other choices. Um, so really just D tier potentially. True Strike uh, is a fantastic talent for melee attackers, auto crit on everything. It is the cornerstone. It is what kill zone is for Overwatch builds. True Strike is for melee attack builds. It's just fantastic, but only for that build. Which brings us to Line Breaker, which is fantastic for every single uh, build that uh, can afford going that deep into strength because you can regularly get inspired, as in you get, regain four AP when you're shooting someone within four tiles of range. Now, for me, that wasn't um, a, a lot of uh, different uh, characters, only the one character that always wanted to go uh, close and personal. But for that one character, it was essentially four extra AP every single round. And that in itself is great. So, strength's good. Um, 
specifically line breaker and true strike uh, as well as breach and clear take the cake here which neatly brings us to the last of our abilities wisdom score so let's uh, rush through them savior 30 percent more hit points used when bandaged i should say something about savior and then in return also painkiller which allows you to gain uh, th one grit per three medical so it kind of caps at 33 uh, grit um, which a patient will receive when you bandage them so for starters you can only bandage someone who actually has taken damage so there is no way to abuse this talent here in order to uh, gain uh, 33 grit secondly grit uh, caps at 30 so i don't even know where they made it more than 30 but both of that is besides the point um, i started the game thinking that it would be great to have a dedicated doctor and to a degree it is the reality is it is much much more efficient to just spend two or three training iterations to give everyone in your team 20 to 30 uh, medical which is enough to typically bandage yourself through a couple of small wounds the majority of times when you uh, when you will have lost hit points the hit point loss is in around 10 to 20 hit points so with that amount of medical you can actually uh, regain these hit points with in a very efficient way you're behind cover and you use the last two um, action points in order to heal yourself that uh, frees you up from needing to rush to your patient so you don't need to essentially traverse the battlefield and get someone else in uh, danger also two people standing together are two people that can be hit by a grenade instead of one person so highly highly um, discouraged by the way that these um, uh, perks work i am of the fond opinion that you should with a higher medical rating have the ability per combat to remove wounds maybe divide uh, the medical by 10 so that someone with 100 medical can remove up to 10 wounds or by 15 whatever if it would be better the and if medical would work differently these perks could actually carry their weight as a sense i will warn you both of them i would not skill again which brings us to distracting shot distracting shot, uh, shot is good solid uh, a tier i would have it at least once within uh, the team because you find yourself in situations where you are fully in an overwatch uh, situation overwatch has been nerfed a bit because now specifically machine guns require ap to continue shooting so there is not this situation where you just take uh, punishment over and over and over and again distracting shot however is an easy way out to um, finish overwatch so i would suggest doing uh, taking that which would be my pick out of the three here uh, to be honest next topic arterial shot and with that trick shot again two of the things that are great on paper but uh, do not really work that well in reality so i was a big fan of uh, shooting arms and legs arms for inaccuracy legs for slowing down the enemy and of course when i saw a trick shot where legs will also knock them down arms will make them numb so they can only use normal shots and then um, exposure if you shoot them into the groin uh, removing all of the cover i was like wow that's a really strong perk the reality uh, of the game is you oftentimes just kill the enemy outright and if the enemy is so armored that they cannot uh, be shot outright then you typically use explosives or ammo penetrating rounds and both of these methods are way more efficient than starting to kind of quote unquote crowd control them unless there are better ways of regularly crowd controlling them uh, this year effectively would not really apply in many cases i cannot i simply cannot see a case where you would like trick shot uh, an enemy um, and and then just have status effects running instead of simply killing them there might be a niche build uh, where you use short ranged weapons and then you use trick shots just in order to keep the uh, the enemy in place but listen uh, none of the two talents really uh, did it for me so i'm a bit skeptical because killing is just a better option and both of them do not really help to do that the amount of times where I wanted to hit arms um, as uh, one of the few um, uh, parts and said, damn, I wish it would be 100% instead of 50% damage was really, really limited. Maybe once or twice in hundreds of fights. So both of them get a D rating. Moving on to silver. 
stress management you become inspired uh, so gain extra ap the first time that a negative effect will hit you very niche um, it can work not the greatest uh, talent i would give it a c tier maybe d tier uh, it is not good compared to the other wisdom talents and at this point when you listen to me it completely sounds like the wisdom uh, tr uh, tree is not that good they have healing abilities they do have the trick shots so that's already taking like a third of the talents out of it and then so can even says stress management is also not really worth it how hold on for a second um, I would actually say the wisdom tree is very much worth it, but you need to have the right talent. So I already talked about distracting shot being a fantastic talent. The other talents are all fantastic in, in their own regard. So they are really good. It just means that at the end you end up with that, 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 and that talent um, being noticeably stronger than the other ones. So uh, we talked about distracting shock. Uh, let's talk about dire warning. When morale is high or very high, there is a 15% uh, chance to cause panic with each attack. That does not only mean with the um, individual enemy, but it means for enemies standing around. I haven't fully figured it out, but I would uh, say potentially close range, so four tiles around the enemy. Panic is is great um, because panic means the enemy loses two rounds and will just uh, run away do nothing else you can chase them up and uh, hunt them down it's effectively a solid kill of an enemy um, if it happens so 15% insta kill uh, chance uh, for anything around the target that you're hitting which is great but pair that together with inspiring strike which increases morale whenever you deal 50 damage or more. Perfect for snipers um, because their single attack damage is typically higher than that. Uh, and let's shortly talk about morale. You should not underestimate that or sleep on it. Morale has many, many, many positive effects. Uh, morale, uh, you start at morale level three which is normal morale. It can uh, go down to low or very low morale or to high and very high morale, respectively morale level one, two, three, four, and five. With every um, additional morale level, you're getting more APs. Uh, so at uh, high level, I think it's one, and at a very high level, it's three additional APs, allowing you to uh, simply do more. Additionally to that, your chances of hitting become uh, better and your range slightly increases as well. Plus your free movement range also um, increases so you get APs for free movement so when the team's morale is high everybody is better off my team at the end has always had high morale and with uh, high morale uh, they essentially had around 20 AP each which um, made them absolute killing machines so inspiring strike you should have one person in your team that has that because without inspiring strike which is a super good way of increasing morale the only other ways of increasing morale is ultra damage so a crit uh, onto an enemy which might be difficult once you already have low morale or a specific um, extraordinary kill that could be taking the head off exploding multiple people at once or just an interrupt attack or any other special attack anything that counts as special attack ice storm uh, isis ice storm for instance all of those could be triggering morale however inspiring strike always does it when you deal enough damage and once you are at high morale it is a complete game changer this talent alone uh, uh, for me makes the whole wisdom tree worth it um, it gets a solid s tier because it is such a uh, group buffing I uh, item and if you see that the moment that you have high and very high um, morale, you then also create panic. The, these two together are a powerhouse. Which brings us to the last um, one that we haven't covered yet, which is high, uh, the shock and awe. Uh, high morale uh, when starting combat. So that in itself is already great because you don't need a lot of extra morale. And then t a deal 10% extra damage um, uh, flat out when morale is high or very high. So that in itself is just flat out 10% uh, damage which means for four talents in this tree you get a distracting uh, shot which is great you get uh, a panic attack you get the ability to give everybody AP and uh, you start with more AP and more damage uh, to begin with so that tree is great unfortunately like I said the other talents do not necessarily hold up to the same level of greatness 
but it is okay. I would uh, say it is definitely something to not necessarily uh, sleep on. It's it's a good tree overall. Which brings us to the end of uh, today's guide. I talked through all of uh, the perks. I hope you found that uh, useful. There is a separate video upcoming, uh, a guide to a couple of builds, and then a showcase how the builds actually work in action. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye, guys.